So welcome to the show, Robert Grant. Hey, Billy, how you doing? All right, man. It's good to have you back on here on Forbidden Knowledge TV. <laughs> so great to be with you. And uh, I'm ever impressed by all the things you do. You've got your hands in so many things and you run <laughs> them all effectively. And I think it's because you do what you say. Yeah. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. I, I take pride in that. You know, a little bit of integrity. You have to, you know, don't make promises that you can't keep. And I learned that just raising my family, you know, raising my kids making promises to them. And I knew, you know, from my upbringing that sometimes those things don't come to fruition. And I didn't want to be that kind of parent. I wanted to make sure if I told them something, dog runner, I was going to follow through on it to the best of my ability. You know, you don't always hit a home run, but, you know, at least they can see the effort. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, I, you know? I have had that exact same belief system my entire yeah. life. It's like in business, success in business is really nothing more than delivering consistently on what you said you were going to deliver on. Right. And right. it's under promise, over deliver, yep. under promise, over deliver, do that consistently and you'll have success. It may not be immediate overnight success, but it will build up momentum with time. Right. Exactly. And definitely it works. Yeah. That is no doubt, man. So, you know, I've been going through your book. I mean, Philomath, I, you know, I was one of the first people to get this book. Uh, the book is incredible. I have two copies, one copy that I read and the other copy that I just have, like, nobody can touch it. Because well, I really I'm going to send you pretty, pretty soon. We're going to have a hardback uh, oh. version as well. And I'm going to send you a, a special, uh, a special hardback version just for you. Oh, uh, but we did also just come out with our ebook version just last week. Yeah. Okay. And I'm happy to say that uh, it's still, you know, the book tends to still be right up at the top of the number theory and uh, and geometry sections on um, on Amazon, which is like mind blowing to me. I, I yeah. it's been three months now since it got launched, and it's still been right at the top. It's been it only gets beaten in number theory by this children's guide on numbers. <laughs> which I don't know. It's like it's like there's a children's guide on numbers, which every school uses, right, for for yeah. little kids. And mm -hmm. then um, and then there's uh, there's our books, and usually we're like two and three. And then the next one is like Euclid's elements. Right. So, you know, Euclid is a very famous Greek mathematician. There's all kinds of stuff in there on pi and you yeah. name it, you know, and on Euler's identity and some really right. complex math subjects. But yeah. I really don't consider Philomath a pure mathematics book. And I'm sure right. you have probably noticed that in your reading of it so far, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is an incredible bestseller, guys. You have to go get Philomath. Uh, it's on Amazon. And it's a it's a philosophy mathematical book. It's a philosoph yeah. philosophical mathematical book. It's, it's really amazing, you know, and I mean, just some of the stuff in there really aligns with some of the topics that I talk about having to deal with, you know, frequencies and you can see the cosine waves and you can see how frequencies can entangle uh, with thought processes. I mean, it just really, it's really an amazing book. It really, to me, it explains the underlying basis of some spiritual concepts. It really kind of links it for me to together, um, you know, and uh, it's just an incredible book, man. What drove you to work on this book and, you know, come up with this? Well, you know, it's been a labor of love. Um, it, it is not something that I ever aspired to do to write a book that kind of right. was mainly on, you know, mathematics, geometry and philosophy. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think the title on the cover kind of says it all. First of all, Philo math. Most people think math is mathematics, but. Most people don't know that mathematics doesn't actually refer in the original sense of the Greek word. It doesn't work, refer to the quantity of science or the science of quantity, rather. That's a term that was given to it by Aristotle. So there were a lot of Greek mathematicians that came along before Aristotle, and Aristotle was not really a great mathematician at all or a geometer. Mathematics prior to Aristotle was defined as all learning, all learning. So wow. philo just means lover. It's the same philo from philosophy. Right. So philo math means lover of learning. Yes. And yesterday I met with a six year old little boy named Ryan, who was genius of a kid who knew everything about the solar system, and even the dwarf planets and exoplanets and Kuiper belt at six years old. Wow. I think he's the youngest follower of my work. So I had to meet this kid. Yeah. And he's a genius. Wow. And, you know, I thought to myself, this kid is already a philo math. Yes. He's already someone who loves to learn. Mm -hmm. And loving learning doesn't mean you have to do it in a school or a university. It should be 
a love affair that we have for our entire lives. And so my passion on this was to share my love of learning mm -hmm. and hopefully make it contagious for people to yeah. break out of these molds of like, you know, I'm going to be a biologist or I'm going to be a nanoparticle biologist or I'm going to be, you know, X type of physicist that's super, yeah. super specialized. I think that that's one of the things that has really damaged our whole education system and that mm -hmm. makes us not fall in love with learning. I think falling in love with learning, for me at least, it's been about connecting the dots on how everything's connected mm -hmm. and not separate at all. Yeah. And when when you figure out that math is really just another form of music, mm -hmm. which is very much in the book, which is yeah. also just another form of philosophy. Yeah, exactly. Everything relates to that same phi, right? That's mm -hmm. that's the connection that connects all of it. And I even see it over your right shoulder with MI, like it's a like some sort of an element on the periodic elements chart, right? That's right. One point six one eight. Yeah. You know, that yeah. whole thing and what it yeah. means. There you go. Mindset. Mm -hmm. The element yeah. of mindset. I like that. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, what that means is this connection to the divine. Mm -hmm. And this whole book is about seeing the connection, whether you call that. Some people think that the divine means like some old guy with a white beard. Right. right. Uh, whether he's white or black, I don't care. Doesn't yeah. matter to me. Right? right. But he's not. That's the thing. It's like in my con in my context, God is just the entire universe. Right. It is literally everything. It's kind of like the way it's described in Star Wars. That's the way mm -hmm. I see it. Yes. It's, it's like what they talked about in Star Wars as the midichlorians, right? The right. force, the life force. Yeah. yeah. And that's kind of how I see it. There's nothing here in this U inverse mm -hmm. that is not the divine. Right. And when we perceive randomness, that's really just another word for ignorance. Mm. Because the pattern is there. It's just that we're not zooming out far enough to be able to perceive the pattern. Right. And, yeah. and that's what this book does is it basically illuminates patterns that are hidden in plain sight and not hidden in a nefarious way that we're never meant to find them. Yeah. They're hidden so they can be found. Exactly. And that finding is a very deeply spiritual experience because you connect then to the universe, your you inverse in a new way that maybe you didn't anticipate or know that was even possible. Right, exactly. I agree with you a thousand percent. That is so real. And it's like these encoded mathematics are were put there in ancient times for the people of this era right now to actually uncover and rediscover and actually understand to a higher level or a higher degree you know, we could put it into action, put it into play in our own lives. That's right. And, yeah, I think that's really important. Yeah. It's just a language for the universe. Yeah. So, you know, people ask me all the time, you know, did you intend to become a mathematician? And now I have several publications in mathematics and we have a new one coming out very soon called the Sum Product Conjecture, which I'm super excited about. Wow. Um, which basically proves that the relationship between the sum and the product of the same two numbers is actually a triangle. Mm. And so the sides of the triangle are the sum. Okay. So X and Y, that means every triangle has two parents. Right. Like you think of them as a horizontal axis and a vertical axis. Mm. So X plus Y is the two side slopes of, the, of a pyramid, let's say, in two dimensions, a, a triangle. The base is the difference. So Y minus X. And the height is the square root of the product, the square okay. root of X times Y. Mm. Every time... This is absolutely, you can test it on any triangle. Yeah. And even if you have a scalene triangle, which is sort of an irregular triangle, you mm -hmm. can break that down into right triangles and it works for the right triangle as well. Wow. So this is showing us also that even geometry at the triangle level mm -hmm. is no different than a blockchain mm -hmm. that we can trace back to its origin. Right. So it's a super sophisticated blockchain technology approach yeah. which you can then trace back to its parents. And right. then if its parents are not prime numbers, you can continue to trace that all the way back to the number one until it is. Wow. And so it's very similar to fractals then. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. That is yeah. exactly what it is. So wow. when people ask me about being a mathematician, I say, you know, I don't really consider myself a mathematician. Mm -hmm. I probably consider myself just a human being yeah. who is learning the language of the universe. Yeah. And, I think that's our divine right to learn that language. I don't think I have to be a mathematician to connect right. with the universe through the language that the universe uses. Right, right. 
I agree with you a thousand. I tell people all the time. So our philosophy is very similar in terms of the mathematics you've embedded into this book. And, you know, some of the physics that I talk about where, for example, in a double slit experiment where you have uh, you have the electron, which actually makes a conscious decision, whether it's being looked at or not looked at, whether it's going to become a stay as a wave or become a, a solid particle. So we have wave particle duality. And so what that tells me, though, is that every atom in the entire universe has conscious electrons orbiting them. So that means that everything is conscious. Everything, everywhere, including the monitor that you're watching me on and I'm watching you on, it's conscious. This microphone is conscious. Why? Because the atoms are conscious. And we don't create anything. Man doesn't make anything. We organize atoms in a particular format or structure, but we didn't make the atoms. So we just, we're stacking them. That's exactly right. And so that means that we can, once we understand this reality, mm -hmm. then you can start to experience life differently. Yes. You can start to have non-local mm -hmm. experiences where yeah. your thoughts will manifest into reality, right? Very, very quickly. Someone wrote today because I just, uh, you know, put up a post on my Instagram, mm -hmm. Robert Edward Grant on Instagram. Yeah. And I just posted that I discovered today on the 13th, the, the construction that's supposed to be impossible mm -hmm. using a compass in a square only using the ancient Greek method uh, how to construct a 13-sided polygon. So a 13-sided polygon is deemed to be impossible. It was deemed by Gauss and Wanzel, who was a French mathematician back in the 19th century, that it's absolutely impossible to do. Wow. And I found that, I think it was 1842, um, I found that it is absolutely possible to do it. Hmm. I had to use the Da Vinci Code to crack it. Nice. Because what Da Vinci actually gave us in his square and circle of the Vitruvian Man was what is known in geometry as a construction box. Mm. So a construction box is something that you use. So like when you construct phi, right, yeah. which would be how can I use compass and square to construct phi? You make a, you make a square, first of all, mm -hmm. and then you cut that square in half, and then you take that from the base of that half square up mm -hmm. to the upper angle of that square, and then you fit the compass to that, right, yeah. which you've got one and one side. So mm -hmm. then this third side here, is going to be, you know, root two. Right. So once you have root two, then you can just take the compass and bring it down to the side and it gives you exactly the 618 and 1.618 over your shoulder. Correct. And that then allows you to, to draw a pentagon, right? It allows you to draw a pentagon because then you can use that as a compass measure. It doesn't matter what you start with as a unit measurement because yeah. everything's just ratio based. It's all right. just a ratio based universe. And mm -hmm. that's why fractals are there too. Yes. So as soon as you use that as a construction box, then you can draw a lot of different geometries. Mm -hmm. Da Vinci's squaring of the circle uniquely, and when you complete it by squaring the circle mm -hmm. to have the area match the area of the squared circle, because yeah. Da Vinci's version was actually Euler number, which is a very important mathematical constant. Yeah. The, the art community and the art historian community had no clue, because they're not mathematicians, Yep. that the area of da Vinci's square was actually Euler and the area of da Vinci's circle is pi, right. using one as a radius value for the circle. Mm -hmm. Well, they didn't get that. What da Vinci actually did was make a construction box that was incomplete. Mm -hmm. So by figuring out how to square the circle to make a square using the framework da Vinci gave mm -hmm. that has the identical area as the circle itself, so then they're both pi, yeah. Once you figure that out and then you figure out how to make the perimeter equal to the circumference of the circle also, which is another square, it's a smaller square, you have all three squares, then you can use that as a construction box in order to construct all yeah. other geometries. Right. And just this week, on the 7th of July, I discovered the heptagon, how to construct the heptagon. I saw that. Um, yep. And then on the 11th, I discovered how to construct the hendecagon using just simply the proportional ratios of the da Vinci construction box wow. of geometry. Incredible. And then today I discovered it for the 13th. Mm -hmm. And each of these happened on exactly the 7th, on the 11th and the 13th. And I didn't plan any of it. Yeah. And uh, it was also kind of remarkable because on, on the 7th, I said to my colleagues here that were in the office, when I drew the heptagon, I was like, wow, I just did what's supposed to be impossible using this simple construction box method that da Vinci encrypted. Mm -hmm. So I had to finish the rest of it in order to figure it out. That was like unlocking a key. Imagine yeah. he encrypted infinite information in one circle in one square. Incredible. The Euler number wasn't even discovered 
as yeah. a value until Isaac Newton two centuries later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what? It's so incredible. obviously he knew this, right? Yeah. It's like, I'm not just going to land the number exactly, please, right? right? He yeah. was way more advanced than what any of us know. Light years ahead of his time. Light years totally. ahead of his time. Yeah. yeah and, totally. And, I mean, just look at the bicycle that he drew in the oh, 15th century. Yeah, and cool. It looks just like a bicycle in the early 20th century, like yeah. identical. The helicopter right. that he just drew is exactly the current Mars lander. Mm-hmm. Yep, right. sure is. It's flying around. It looks like a helicopter with the same, you know, kind of like, you know, sail that it has on it that spins like a helicopter does. It's an identical design. Yeah, we copied yeah. it. Somehow he tapped into time differently than what we do. He could see the future. Mm -hmm. And we all have met people that are psychic and have psychic type experiences. But how can we quantify that? How can we see this? Well, I'm telling you that he had a higher understanding of geometry. Yeah. And I see geometry as a QR code for the subconscious mind mm -hmm. and for the conscious to reconnect into one. Yeah. yeah. And once we ex and once we experience that, mm -hmm. then we can become a combined super consciousness that was spoken of by, you know, people like uh, in Maslow's hierarchy of needs, as mm -hmm. well as going beyond that into Carl Jung, you know, yeah. C.G. Jung, who was a, a famous a psychologist and psychiatrist who was a, a mentee of Freud, but had a falling out later on with Freud yeah, and has become the, and he was a great alchemist as well. He was also the psychiatrist for uh, Einstein. Yeah. So, I mean, fascinating story about Carl Jung as an alchemist, but I think that the doorway for this higher understanding is learning the geometry mm -hmm. and actually drawing it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's That's something what I like about your book. You draw out a lot of the geometry in the book. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, so you guys, so that the reader can also experience this, because when you read this book, it's intended to trigger things in your subconscious mind to make them conscious for you. Yeah, it's all about integrating with your shadow mm -hmm. and embracing the things that you haven't liked about yourself. Yeah, you know, we all create a persona that we think this is the outside world. This is who I am. This is what I want to show to the outside world. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. actually. The whole point is, instead of hiding all these other aspects about yourself that you don't like and you don't want to show, mm -hmm. realizing that you can accept those aspects and you work together instead of constantly fighting with it. Right. And this shadow integration work is, you know, so when you read this book, don't just expect to come out of it with, oh, this is great. I learned a lot about new mathematics. Mm -hmm. You will start noticing major and subtle changes happening literally every day with how you perceive the world. Mm -hmm. And if we want to change the world to make it a better place, yeah. the easiest way to do that is for us to be the change we want to see in the world, change exactly. our own perception. So I wrote something down today that was, you know, it's like not be the change you want to see in the world, yeah. see the change you want to be in the world. I like that. Yeah. I, I like that because it takes this manifestation. We have to manifest the reality. Absolutely. I agree a thousand percent with that. We have to manifest. We have to create. We have to see it. We have to believe it. And we have to believe that it's already happened before it's happened so that it can become a reality. We take it from the consciousness platform where the true reality exists and bring it into the third dimensional platform where it's more illusory. Well, most people say, you know, seeing is believing. I've always believed it's the other way around. Believing is seeing. Yeah. So when I drew this heptagon, uh, I had already been informed by certain, you know, crop circle groups that like do this. And, and one of them is named Spirit Stem on Instagram. She follows my work. And I had been first informed by Nassim Haramain that the logo that I chose for one of my companies mm -hmm. was a crop circle the same week that I, and I did never track crop circles. So I had no idea. It was a yeah. crop circle of four crescent moons. Wow. And that, that uh, was the logo that I chose for one of my companies that I founded. Mm -hmm. And so he said, so when I saw the logo, I knew it was a crop circle, so I wanted to meet you. So that was the first time that mm -hmm. I thought there was any correlation between the two things. Yeah. I then was informed by this group that I've drawn now 12 up until the, up until today. There were 12 crop circles that matched the work that I drew and usually within very close time proximity. Mm -hmm. So usually I never claim them until it's like I drew it and posted it on social media and then yeah. it showed up as a crop circle. So in the beginning, I was like, maybe I have like some people that are, 
you know, really, really like geometry, you know, sort of <laughs> geometry zealots in England who are like, okay, let's go make a, you know, and I was joking about it today. It's like, I was having this meme imagination. I'm like, oh yeah, we should post a meme that, that someone would make to make fun of this, which would be like, okay, here's somebody drawing geometry and mm -hmm. then like a bunch of guys in a field with boards and ropes, right? Yeah, right. And then underneath it, this is what it's like to have you money. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> oh man! So, so I was like, "Oh man, that would be a funny yeah. ass meme. That would be yeah. so funny." Yeah. But, but honestly, I said to the group. I mean, I said to the person that was right next to me. I said, "I would not be surprised if this showed up as a crop circle." Right. And actually, apparently, it was first sighted on seven seven, or was believed to be have, have been shown up either on seven eight or on seven seven, because okay. it was first reported on seven nine. Oh, so, wow. and then it finally got confirmed this morning, mm. right? Because it was kind of like over the weekend type of thing. Yeah. So, and it's a fourteen sided, and that's what I said. I said this is either going to be a heptagon, mm -hmm. or it's going to be a fourteen sided, which is called a tetradecagon. Okay. And 14 sides, why that? Well, because the mod characteristics of, you know, polygons make spirals. Yep. And and their inverted forms, their upside down forms, mm -hmm. create double the number of modular positions. Mm -hmm. So a, a heptagon would create a mod 14, mm -hmm. 14 sides. You would yeah. have 14 positions going around the spiral. And I was stunned this morning, but not. Yeah. When. Yeah. I got uh, the text from the group that tracks crop circles that, oh my gosh, um, there's another crop circle this morning and it wow. has 14 sides. Wow. So that makes it the 13th time that this has happened with my wow. work. And you can actually go back and track it from the yeah. time I, because it's all on my Instagram. You know, the right, vast right. majority of them are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're going to show some clips from your Instagram as well. We'll have it, uh, some cutaways to that. So that's really, it's mind blowing. It's really amazing. I mean, you know, as you get into this math, as you get into this book, guys, this Philo Math book, which I highly recommend you go get Philo Math, okay, by Robert Edward Grant, you're going to start to see things differently in this world. You're going to start to notice a lot more correlations, mathematical correlations, geometrical correlations. Your meditations are going to seem enhanced in weird kind of ways because what's happening is you are now, in my opinion, you're quantum entangling with more information. You're getting more downloaded information. And another thing that's beautiful about quantum entanglement that they found out now in physics and quantum physics is that you can actually quantum entangle from your mind with information in the universe. And it's, it doesn't matter what time it is, past, present or future, because they all happen at once. You can quantum entangle with information from the future or from the past or from the sure. present. So it's pretty amazing. But this book really, like I say, it, it's something that you got to get because it, it's really going to take you to another level. Uh, and you don't need to be a mathematician to understand it. No. Mm -hmm. Take your time and go through some of these philosophical mathematical concepts and these geometric concepts and just give yourself some time to let it marinate and then meditate on it. And I think you're going to be very impressed with the result and the way that you're going to change the way, the way you're going to perceive the world around you, the universe around you is going to definitely, definitely change. It's, it's amazing, man. This is great work. This is phenomenal. So work. thank you. Thank you so much. And I want to give credit to my, my uh, publishing partner and, and research yeah. colleague Talal Guanam, yes. who uh, is a is a physicist and a uh, you know, he's a professor at a university at King mm -hmm. Abdullah University, which is one of the top math programs in the world. Wow. And I read his book called The Mystery of Numbers, mm -hmm. and I was reading it on airplanes, like this thick book on like number theory. And everyone's looking at me like, "What the hell are you reading, man? This is like <laughs> weird stuff." Yeah, and. Um, so I read it and afterwards I, I said, you know what? I'm gonna reach out to this guy. So I reached out to him mm -hmm. and I called him up. This was six years ago. I mm -hmm. called him up, he was still at the university and I said, um, you know, I loved your book but I found five errors in the book. Mm -hmm. And I said, it may be different ways to look at this but your book's amazing. Yeah. And it presented a lot of new discovery stuff. I said, how'd you like to leave the university and come work with me? Mm -hmm. And two weeks wow. later, he left the university and came to work with me. Wow. And and so we've been working together ever since. So he's a fantastic guy, really fantastic person and super genius person. Yeah. But, you know, you raised the topic of quantum entanglement. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with something called the quantum eraser? 
the quantum so yes so basically quantum eraser test is another level mm. of the double slit phenomenon wow where what scientists did is they looked at this double slit phenomenon and they said well is this something that's actually at one point in time or is it related to time mm. We know that there must be some consciousness that's inside of all of the electrons, right? Or right. photons, whatever you're using. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You get the same, you know, difference. Either it's going to be a wave or once you've observed it, it becomes a particle, right? right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so this is the separation between the two. And actually, I'll say that, that it's in the book also. You maybe have not got to it yet, but basically wave particle duality is explained in numbers. Mm. So you've got X and one over X. Right. So X becomes the particle. One over X is infinite generally for many, many, many numbers. Yeah. Right. That's a wave of potentiality. Yeah. So the moment that you make a conscious observation, it flips to a reciprocal, becomes X, and yeah. then it's a particle. Right. It's 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 done. So think yeah. of it as a random number generator of mm. the period mm. of the one over X of whatever number, and then mm. it just flips immediately to a particle representation. Right. And you can see that the whole universe is like that. We're all just divisions of the number one. Correct. Every one of us are just divisions of the number one. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. And yep. what's reflected back to us is the reciprocal value that we are not. Think about reflection spectra. So you see colors like my, my color of my wall here is kind of like a grayish bluish color. My mm -hmm. floor is tan. The reason why I chose the, those two colors is because they're actually the opposites of each other on the color wheel. Mm. Because the true color of the floor is the bluish gray color, and yep. the true absorbed color of the walls is actually the tan color. Mm. They're exactly opposite of each other. So yep. therefore, they're complementary. Right. They can work together, right? Mm -hmm. So wave particle duality and the quantum eraser took one more level mm -hmm. of the double slit experiment. Mm -hmm. What they did is they looked to see what would happen, mm -hmm. right, through time when you conduct the same experiment. And what they found is that even if you didn't observe, right? Yeah. And then flip it into collapse the wave function, make it a particle. Even right. if you didn't observe it at the moment, right? If you had a recording of it mm. and and you, oh. you, you basically never observed it, mm -hmm. or if you did observe it ever in the future, any time in the future, right? somehow the... Oh. The, I see where this is going. <laughs> oh, <see. laughs> Somehow the electrons and photons knew whether they would be observed in the future or not. <sighs> oh, man. This is incredible. Right. They knew whether they would be observed in the future or not, and they acted accordingly. Hmm. So then you have to think, well, wait a minute. Is everything then fixed? Man. Holy crap. But wow. looking up, there's a great PBS special on this, mm -hmm. on the quantum eraser. It's called the quantum eraser double slit experiment. Watch that on PBS on YouTube. You can find it. It's fantastic. But what I'm proposing is that all of it has its basis in number. Yeah. Everything that we experience in wave particle duality can be experienced through number. And the way it manifests to us is those mm -hmm. numbers, which are fractals of consciousness, yeah. become a coherence of consciousness that we call geometry. Yeah. And and that's why the, the subtitle of the book is the geometric unification of science and art through number, yeah. because what we perceive as all being separate, whether it's spirituality and science mm -hmm. or mathematics and science. Right. And, you know, we could say mathematics is this queen of the sciences. But, mm -hmm. you know, biology isn't going to look very similar to mathematics, but actually it's all geometry, too. It's all geometry. If you look yeah. at DNA. DNA is hexapentacus designs. It's right. <laughs> hexagon and pentagon over yeah. and over and over again. That is the nucleotide pair. It's five six six. Yeah. It's five six six. Mm. So when you see it from that perspective, mm -hmm. then you realize, wait a minute, this is everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's imbued in everything. Everything. Even, even the Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. Mm -hmm. so if we looked at the number that it would be associated with the word Lisa. Mm. Mona is monad. Okay. Monad Lisa. So what's the Lisa? Oh, man. The Lisa is Roman numerals L, 
I is 51. Yeah. 51. S A in in the ancient languages of uh, of Sumerian and um and Babylonian, right? Are 66. Six. Mm-hmm. So 5166. Six. Mm. Monad Lisa. Yeah. So 5166, that is exactly the structure of DNA. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Merges, has a one adjacent side, right, yeah. where, where the, it's a shared side with the hexagons. And then yeah. there's two hexagons. That's all nucleotide pairs right there. Right, right. Wow. See, guys, this is why I hang out with people like Robert Edward Grant, okay? Because I have to find people that can stimulate my brain and make my brain go boom, because it's hard to do, man. And you just you just made so many connections for me. It's almost for me right now. It's mind blowing because I just I just connected twenty thousand dots all at once just now between, <laughs> between the quantum eraser and this. I just connected so many dots. I can do now twenty more workshops on twenty different topics based off of what you just taught me just now. Literally, it, it's crazy. <laughs> the day we discovered the heptagon construction, one of the you know uh, people that we have working at the company. She came into my office. She goes, I feel like I'm on crack. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. And she has like a French accent. She's like, I feel like I am on crack. <laughs> I love it. So, no, it, it, it's very energizing when you connect to the universe, when you can connect the dots and all of a sudden, wow, that's what this is? Wow. The Vitruvian man, the picture we've all looked at subconsciously, we've known there's something more to it. Yeah. And now it's a freaking construction box and it's self-evident. Yeah. It's yeah. proven. I mean, people, it's funny because I already had some mathematicians to say, oh, well, just because you match this all the way out to 15 digits doesn't mean that it's perfect. It's like, oh, man, dude, that just cracks me up. 15 digits. Do you know how small 15 digits is? Yeah, that would be the same as one femtometer, hmm. right? 10 to the negative 15th power is a femtometer. Mm-hmm. That means it's one quadrillionth of one centimeter, right? One quadrillionth of a centimeter. And it still works out in that tiny, small scale. And, and it's that perfect. <laughs> all it's the crazy. way perfect because it's, it's based on ratio. It's yeah. all based on ratio. Mm-hmm. And we we just tend to see randomness because we want to see it. You know, it's like if you think you'll be right mm-hmm. or you think you'll be wrong. Yeah. The truth is you'll be right. Yeah. Because whatever it is that you believe is going to happen. Mm-hmm. We think that we live in this world where everything is material and things happen to us. The universe happens to me. Damn it. Mm-hmm. I had another thing happen. I'm all right. victimized and shit. Oh, man. Right. Right. Like, <laughs> people are hating on me. I can't get up. I can't do anything. I can't yeah. succeed. It's like, No. Yeah. Change your perception and change your world. Yeah. Start seeing the world as it's happening for you, not against you. Exactly. It happens through you and for you. Mm. Mm. It's not happening against us. It happens for us. Yeah. And that's the most beautiful realization that we can have because even when bad things, bad things mm-hmm. happen to us, yeah. we can start looking at it as, oh, my gosh. And I, I, I mean, I'm sure you've experienced this. Mm-hmm. You know, you're a little bit older than me, and although you look way younger, it's freaking <laughs> unbelievable. I think you're like some sort of dude, okay? Like, <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm not surprised that you built an entire town underground. Yeah. So I'll leave it at that. But, okay. but it, here's the thing. Whatever we believe will happen in our lives, mm-hmm is usually what does happen. We don't get in this life what we quote unquote deserve. Yeah. We get what we expect. Exactly. So true. So true. And you have to understand that when adversity comes your way, like you just said, how do you find the meaning in this? You know, for example, yesterday I was on a flight and it was a three hour flight, supposed to be a three hour flight, ended up circling around for almost an hour and a half, almost ran out of gas in the air and had to get redirected to another airport. Finally, we were on the way to another airport. Then they said, oh, we got approval to land. We're going to circle back. They come back and they land at Fort Lauderdale Airport because of lightning storms. The whole airport was shut down. And now we're on the plane an extra hour and a half. Plus, now we're sitting on the tarmac. We're waiting another hour and a half just to get to a gate to get off the plane. 
And the whole time, a lot of people are going haywire. They're crazy. They're stressed. They're frustrated. This is a commercial flight? Yes, a commercial flight. They were wow. pissed. The whole airport was shut down. It wasn't just that particular airline. It was lightning. Severe light. Even the private jets were shut down. And in my brain, what I was saying was, and what I even typed to my friend was, this happened because this particular delay stopped me from being in a car accident. It stopped me from being in a situation that was unfavorable for me. It put me in the right position to bump into somebody on the time scale, on the timeline that I need to be on to bump into the right person to have a to have a conversation about something. It happened for us particular. I can't put my thumb on it right now, but there's a reason behind this delay and for what I'm experiencing here. And so while everybody else is wigging out and going haywire and going crazy and frustrating, and one guy went went ate crap and he took his mask off and started screaming profanity at the people, and then they had sent the cops on the plane to arrest him after we we finally get the door open. They made us wait another 15 minutes while the cops came to take him away. Uh, and so I'm looking and observing the chaos and I'm completely calm and Zen and fine with everything because I've accepted that this is happening for me. And so exactly what you just said, it's just a mind state. You know, I've lived through three plane crashes. Mm, wow. Jeez. And so a lot of people will be like, oh, when it's time to travel somewhere, people are like, don't fly with Robert, man. Like some weird shit could go down. I'm like, well, that's one way to look at it. Or the other way to look at it is fly with Robert because he's survived through three plane crashes. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, and, and by the way, you can do that with literally anything. You yeah. can say, oh, I got fired from my job. That was the worst thing. Like life sucks. And now it's like I have no money and, mm -hmm. and all this, blah, blah, blah. Well, the truth is in life, we attract everything that we judge. Yeah until we no longer judge everything we attract. Boom. Yeah. And so whatever happens to us, it doesn't matter what it is, Billy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I got fired from a job once mm -hmm. and it, my hopes were dashed, right? Like I, it was a <laughs> stupid political thing. It was retarded, yeah. but it's the best thing that ever happened to me mm. because that was the day. I remember the next day I flew home. I tell it in my Ted talk, I yeah. flew home from New York and I'm, you know, landing, I threw up on the airplane on the way home because I was so sick about the whole thing. Oh, man. And the next morning I woke up and I was kind of in this funk depression. Mm -hmm. And I went out to go pick up the newspaper. Yep. And we still had newspapers. It was only right. 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> we went out to pick up the newspaper in my driveway. And something entered my mind. Mm. And I thought to myself, today can either be the worst day of my life Mm. or it can be the best. Wow. And I decided right then it was going to be the best day. Nice. But I had lived up until that moment in time and that what had happened the day before was the best thing that could ever have happened. Mm. And that was the day I founded my company. Mm. There you go. And now I have 16 companies in the group. And it's like, you know, something I really enjoy. And you don't, you don't start companies to make money. Uh, starting a company to make money I mean, some people might do it to try to, you know, make ends meet or maybe a supplemental income or something like that. But mm -hmm. if your goal is to make money, it's going to be a hard path yeah. for you. And, you know, it's like it's like when I tell people, they're like, well, you set up the company to make money. I'm like, I don't think I know a single founder that does it with that sole idea in mind. Nope. You know, that'd be like saying, OK, I find my sweetheart and I say to her, Let's have some kids so they can make money for us. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, well, you know, that's not the truth, right? It's nope. like. They, <laughs> they're, they're definitely ain't the truth. <laughs> it's definitely not the truth. Right. So I would never have kids so they can make be an income stream for me. It's kind of the opposite, right? It's totally the yeah. opposite. Totally the opposite. So, totally the opposite. But when you start companies, I know you will know this because you're a very successful entrepreneur. Yeah. They're like children. I, yeah. I'm immediately thinking, OK, this child is going to grow up to be this, that or the other. And I can help influence it. Right. But I need to make sure that it has food and clothing and all yeah. the things on the Maslow's hierarchy. One day it can go to college and one day be independent on its own and not depend on me anymore. That's right. But it's never going to pay back for me. Yeah. Right. Not that way. Yeah. And, and so then when you own a company like that, you never also want to sell your ownership of that company because it's your blood, sweat, and tears. It's mm -hmm. it's much more than just some inanimate 
thing. Yeah. It's just like taking a mental construct. That's why I enjoy doing it because, you know, I'm a Taurus. Mm. And so the thoughts I have have to turn into manifestation. Yeah. It's, it's nothing for me to just be flying up in the sky mm. and, and just have a thought and then say, okay, well, that could just stay up in the sky. You know, yeah. I posted this uh, video of a, one of my friends here at the office got me for my birthday, mm -hmm. this cool little gimbal kind of a gyroscope, right? Oh. And, and it was very cool. Like he 3D printed it or something. I don't know how he made it, but it was really cool. It's got this weighted gyroscope in it. And I posted it last week on Friday night. And immediately I was thinking, this is the this is truly the answer to gravity control. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With the right approach, this is truly the answer to gravity control. I am not capable of just leaving that thought in my head and thinking, oh, someone else will do it. Right. So I've already got it like big time in my mind. Nice. And if you if you answer gravity, mm -hmm. right, which right over your shoulder is another element, which is GR. Yeah. I think, Mm. Greatness. It's gravity, greatness, yep. gravity. and it's one, 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 right? So you got four ones there. Uh -huh. So if you solve gravity, you solve energy. Yeah, absolutely. No doubt. Because you've just got these axes that are four, right? Quadrupoles. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and so you've got, if you know, that electricity is always 90 degrees to magnetism. That's right. Always. What is, what is the opposite of electromagnetism? And James Clerk Maxwell in 1860 actually had it all in quaternions, four pole mm -hmm. symmetry, calling out quadrupolarity. Yeah. It was all changed by his colleague, Oliver Heaviside, mm. who didn't understand the concept of quaternions, mm. right? which would be one real quadrant and three imaginary quadrants. Right. So imaginary planes of numbers. Yeah. And what he had put down is he said that, that electricity and magnetism are linked but mm -hmm. gravity and time are the other sides of that four pole symmetry. Right. Fourfold mirror symmetry. Mm -hmm. So if you crack how to control and do what's called uh, constructive or destructive wave cancellation of gravitational scalar waves, mm -hmm. you will most definitely figure out how to control energy from vacuum. Right. Yeah, you can control energy and you can also create an inertial dampener so that the occupants can't feel uh, shifts in gravity. In space, you can have artificial gravity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely, so I'm already, my mind is already going nuts. Mm -hmm. I'm already thinking about, okay, how do I actually turn this into a manifestation? Yeah. And wow. and you will see it, I'm, I'm, I guarantee it. You yeah. will see it because, you know, I just can't let it go until it becomes a manifestation. Right, right. Yeah, so I'm excited cool. about it, and I I, I want to I, I definitely want to do that. But you know that's all part of the the manifester side of of, of me. You know, being yeah. earthbound Taurus, like I want to take those ideas and bring them into reality. Mm -hmm. It's just a natural course for who who I am and what I what I like to do, what I enjoy doing. Yeah, yeah. I think the thing that I really probably enjoy the most is moments like yesterday I had with this little this little man, six years old, who's an astrophysicist already. Yeah. Incredible, I saw him. <laughs> and teaching and helping him and listening to him, candidly. Yeah. Because that raises my consciousness. The right. more you imagine the world is happening for you, the more the experiences that you have in your life will be linked together. Mm -hmm. There yeah. are messages all around from your higher self in this you inverse, yeah, we're telling you that you're on the right path, and yeah. only you will know what those messages are. It could be seeing the same numbers over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. This is a documented scientific fact of synchronicity. Yeah, yeah, it happens all the time because we live in a mental, not material, universe. That's right. what I truly totally believe. Yeah, exactly. and this is why you can manifest. This is why you can tap into certain frequencies. Once we realize that our brain is a radio receiver, not some hard drive storage. Right. <laughs> yeah. and, and then when we transcend this notion of being stuck in this, he's right, I, you know, this person's wrong, mm -hmm. right? like the cylinder here. Yeah. Oh, when you I showed you this cylinder, right? If I showed you the cylinder and you saw the shadow on the wall behind yeah. it, you could say, oh, you must be holding a circle. 
Mm -hmm. But a person sitting on the other side would look at the shadow cast on the wall and say, no, 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 it's a rectangle. A rectangle, correct. It's a rectangle. Well, the higher knowledge is it's it's a cylinder. Yeah. You know, Einstein says we can't solve problems with the same level or dimension of thinking that the problem was created in. Correct. You have to step into a higher dimensional frame to realize that even a cylinder exists. And then once you do, then you recognize, and I kind of look and say, geez, I used to make the argument about this being a circle or a square or a rectangle also. Mm -hmm. Now it's just kind of funny because I look at it as a cylinder. <laughs> They're both right. They're yeah. both equally wrong. Yeah. They're just limited. It's not right or wrong, really. So yeah. once we transcend out of this thinking of right and wrong, mm -hmm. yeah, then you find true self-acceptance. Yeah. And acceptance of self is really about accepting everyone else and who they are and their condition and, and not necessarily wanting to change them. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's, you don't change the world by wanting to change the world. Mm -hmm. It will only become more elusive to us. The yeah. more we try to fight deforestation, the more deforestation will occur. I the agree. more we try to fight climate change, the more climate change will occur. Yes. We may improve on it in one small area, and then it's like stepping on a water hose. Like all of a sudden, the, the yeah. strength of it shows up in another place and pops out and smacks you in the face. Yeah, yeah. The way that we change the world is by seeing it already. Changing our judgment and our observation of it is paramount. Mm -hmm. That's to right. Changing our experience. And, you know, and I know some people would look at that and go, wait a minute, are you saying that there's no such thing as like, good and evil, what I'm saying actually is that not a single one of us on this planet is any better mm -hmm. or any worse than anyone else. True, accurate, yeah. We are all equally, quote, good and equally bad. Yeah. It's not like, even though I spent my whole life up until I was, you know, 45 years old, Mm -hmm. Trying to just be good and bring the light and all this stuff and love mm -hmm. and light. Actually, you know, love is the gravity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love is the gravity that connects the entire universe, right? Pulls it all together. Yep. And I always would say, oh, no, no, it's all about the light. I want to be in the light. Mm -hmm. When actually the answers that are found within are about embracing and acknowledging the mm -hmm. darkness that we all have within us and accepting it. The more we try to repress it, the more it actually comes back and bites us. Yeah, so right. That's why, you know, one of my things that I tell people in my workshops is I'm not teaching you how to fight evil. I'm teaching you how to control it. And that comes from an ancient, you know, a karate, a judo master, I believe it was. But it's not about going head on and trying to suppress the evil and put it in the cage. It's about trying to it's there. There's nothing you can do about it. How do you know that it's there and then still uh, excel in other areas that you need to excel in? It's about controlling it. You can't take away the darkness. It's going to be there. There's no way to eliminate it. Well, and the darkness is from whence creativity emerges and is birth. Mm. The darkness is when you can learn to embrace it and not judge it negatively in everyone else. Mm -hmm. Then we stop judging ourselves negatively. I don't think the world is a difficult place to live in because people truly hate each other. Yeah. I think that if there was one thing that I would love to see differently about our world, and I'm trying every day to see that, yeah. it's that people would love themselves and stop loathing and hating themselves. Yeah. Because yeah. narcissism is only being in love with the reflection Mm. This is the story of Narcissus, right? And yeah. you know, he looked down into the still, still, the still pool of, of water, and mm -hmm. he saw his reflection, and he fell in love with his reflection. Yeah. It's not that he fell in love with himself. Mm -hmm. He fell in love with the reflection that he thought he was projecting of himself. Right. There's a big difference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because we're the only ones that can't see in ourselves the other aspects of ourselves that we're trying to hide. Yeah. We're the only ones that can't see it. We only have eyes in the front of our head. We can't see behind us. Right. And I think there's a reason for that. Just like, you know, we have a, a windshield and a rear view mirror. Mm -hmm. And I always say, you know what? It's good to take inventory and look in the rear view mirror. 
Mm. But it should be directly proportional to the scale of the rearview mirror versus the windshield. Right. Look forward and be in the now, in the present, and you can kind of look in the future and learn from the things. That's really what the universe is helping us do. The universe right. is helping us by giving us experiences that I believe that what we call destiny is actually just the free will of the higher self. Mm. And when right. you think about this quantum eraser concept and you realize that time's all entangled, yeah, that the future creates the past as much as the past creates the future. When you realize that we're in one torus of time, yeah, and that maybe the way we look at the future itself needs to also be expanded and expounded upon. I agree. Yeah. I think that that there's something when we realize that there is really the eternal now and there's no real time, maybe in this context, then at some point, what we considered was our distant past might actually loop to become a distant future. Exactly. The past is prologue. I love it, man. I love it. Yeah. Guys, this is the amazing, incredible Robert Edward Grant. Mr. Grant, tell them about your uh, new show that you have, if you can, coming out sure. on Gaia. On Gaia, yeah. I know you've done a lot with Gaia. Yeah. Um, I was excited to uh, to accept uh, my own show, I guess, called The Codex. And I haven't announced anywhere really in any you know public format um, mm -hmm. that, uh, that it's a partnership with Gaia. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm very excited about this coming up. It's going to be coming up. In the, uh, in the early part of next year, so probably January, February timeframe. Nice. Um, but we finished all the filming of it. And in fact, I'm probably going to be going back soon to do season two and possibly even three. They've already asked me to do wow. that. Beautiful. But what's, what's really interesting about it is it takes you through a journey. Mm. And that journey has been my own uh, journey along this kind of process of self-discovery after a major crisis that I experienced. Mm. in 2016 that really changed how I perceived the world. Wow. I went through some pretty difficult things. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I still look back with rose colored glasses and I think well, that was all the best thing that ever happened. I would not change a single thing about it. But the codex is to take us through this journey of self discovery because mm. the greatest encryption of all is you. Mm. It is each and every one of us. <laughs> We're here to remember who we are. Yeah. And wow. to embrace and fall in love with that. Yeah. And as we uncover each next aspect of ourselves, we fall in love with the world around us and even the time and experience around us. Mm. And that is what being the change actually embodies. Yeah. And so this takes you through a worldwide trek. And actually, I'm also excited to say that uh, Guy is going to be coming with me to Egypt in October. Oh, nice. This is like, I think, only the first or second time they've ever done a field kind of trek with yeah. someone. And so we're going to be exploring the, uh, you know, they're going to be coming with and, and we're going to be just exploring the Great Pyramid. We're going to be exploring all of the major sites across, you know, Egypt, yeah. uh, even down the Nile, going down to Luxor. And, mm -hmm. and we've got almost 100 people coming with us, which is like, I said, <laughs> we can't do more than two buses. Yeah, that's a lot. Wow. Because we have like armed military escorts and everything. It's a it's a deal, right? We've got we're meeting with the Minister of Antiquities, okay, right, who's coming with us. Uh, we've got some super heavy hitters, maybe even the president of Ish, of, of uh, not Israel for sure of, <laughs> uh, of Egypt, right? And uh, this is going to be an epic trip. And wow. during that trip alone, I'm going to be spending three nights, mm. four nights in the Great Pyramid. I've already done it five times. Yeah, and you know I've spent five hours laying in the sarcophagus, just mm. myself. Yeah. And that is like one of the most experienced, most amazing experiences ever. Mm -hmm. And I don't necessarily connect the two things. Maybe it's a pure coincidence, but two weeks after I did that, I discovered the prime number pattern and published yeah. it. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, who knows? I don't know. It's just like, it could be 13 crop circles. It could all be coincidence. Yeah. But likely not. I don't think so. It's, it's not a coincidence. <laughs> So, so this is going to be an epic trip. On our last trip there, we discovered, I discovered in 2018, the Alpha Omega on the rim of the sarcophagus Yeah, uh, that had per perfectly, and no one had seen it before because you really have to see patterns differently. Yeah. Now, 
people go there and they say, oh, my God, there's the Alpha Omega. But yep. even the Egyptologists, when I said, hey, have you guys seen this before? And by the way, the mm -hmm. entire week before that, I was in Israel. Mm. And I was drawing in my notebook Alpha and Omega symbols. Wow. All week. Wow. I, I knew I was going to discover some. I knew it 100%. Mm. And I went into the Great Pyramid, and you already saw the presentation on it. Yeah. And I'm standing there with my friends. I brought 12 of my friends with me. Mm -hmm. and, and, and one of them was laying in the sarcophagus, and I looked down at the rim. Yeah. And I had this memory mm. of being in the pyramid when the Alpha Omega was pressed into the granite. Wow. Right at that moment. And I don't I don't know how I had a memory of it. I just had a memory. And then I looked down at that exact same spot. Yeah. And <laughs> there it was. There so it then was. I grabbed the Egyptologists that were with me and I said, Have you guys seen this before? There's not supposed to be any writing except mm. for graffiti. And yep. this is like perfectly well formed and it looks super old. Right. Like it's full of got a, a, a long-term patina covering it. And mm -hmm. you know, this is made of rose granite, which is yeah. one of the most brittle materials on the planet. If you try to take a chisel and hammer to that, you'll crack the whole thing. Yeah. Right? You can't do that. I mean, this this granite box is a sound machine. Yeah. You know that the speed of light is 186,282 miles per second, mm -hmm. which incidentally is the same speed of Earth traveling around the sun mm -hmm. divided by 10,000. Mm -hmm. so we travel around the sun at 18.6 miles per second. Right. We'll multiply that by 10,000. You're at 186,000 miles per second. No coincidence. Right. No coincidences. Well, the speed of sound is only, you know, about 730, 740 miles per hour. Yeah. Right. So that's where you get mock speed. You can fly right. in a jet fighter and then all of a sudden break the sound barrier and you get this boom sound, right? Exactly. That's the speed of sound through air. The speed of sound through air is exactly 343 meters per second. Mm -hmm. But when you look at 343 meters per second, when you compare the speed of sound through granite, which is this dense, dense stone, mm -hmm. it's actually 6,000 meters per second. So it's a full 17 and a half times faster yeah. That the speed of sound travels through granite well, than granite. it travels through air. Right. So you're talking about a granite resonance chamber that makes yeah. this sound that goes whoa, 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 super loud. Mm. Now we can only take, and you know, we discovered eight things the last time we went, also. We discovered a bull yeah. and a cow on the wall, which I showed in this uh, podcast yeah. we put together. We're going to be documenting all of this with the latest, greatest equipment. And I right. already am seeing many, many other things. There's a flower of life on both sides of the sarcophagus. Oh. Wow. It is Beautiful. there. So maybe the Great Pyramid is really just about raising consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. That's going to be incredible. I'm glad that you're going to be able to uh, go there, but also broadcast it, stream it from, uh, from Egypt. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to be We are going to be offering, because we can only take you know, maximum like in the hundred person range. And that was already difficult, but yeah. we are going to be offering, and we did this last year as well. And we came back the day before COVID mm. <laughs> closed the wow. borders, which was a freaking nightmare, but wow. thank God we made it back just in time. And yeah. luckily things have improved a lot since then, but, but basically we will be offering a virtual pass as well. So stay tuned for the virtual pass. Uh, so if you would like to attend as if you're there, um, you can you can purchase a virtual pass, and we're going to be doing live broadcasting for that. Excellent, excellent. And I'll make sure the link to your website and your caption of this video also in the uh, in the podcast captions as well. Uh, also, you got you got to Egypt. Uh, we've got we talked about the book Philo Math. It's a bestseller, guys. Make sure you go get Philo Math, Robert Edward Grant. Uh, Geometric Unification of Science and Art Through Number. It's an amazing book. I highly recommend it. Thank you for coming on the podcast today. It's been another great, great talk. I learned some stuff today, which for me is phenomenal. I love when I learn something new. because uh, Now I have a whole lot of stuff I can go research, man. So thank you again. Well, thank you, Billy, for all that you do and for being the genuine person that you are. Um, thank you. You know, I, I, I really admire how busy you are. And, and how you actually produce so much stuff. It's like mind blowing. 
but I, I know it's possible when you put your mind to it and you have the ethos of doing what you say. Yeah. So, but you know, at the same time, the whole world is just about the best thing we could do in the world to change the world is to yeah. have, have everybody start accepting and loving themselves. That's it. That's right. That's right. That's it. And that's contagious. That's it. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. That's Tell it. everybody where they can find you. You can find me on um, on Instagram at Robert Edward Grant. Uh, you can find me also on Facebook, uh, and you'll see my little red and blue logo uh, that's kind of like an interlocked two diamonds, I guess, diamond shapes. And and then uh, you can also find my website of robertedwardgrant.com. And people ask me all the time, why do you use the word Edward in the middle? You know, that sounds kind of like, were you trying to be pretentious? I'm like, no, I don't go. I'm not like Thurston Howell the third or something right. like that. <laughs> it's just all the Robert Grant pages were taken. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah, that was it. So I tried to find something that would uh, be differentiable. But yeah. robertgrant.com, you know, I put all of my content on my website because mm -hmm. I was worried that, you know, someday we, yeah. people might not be able to access it on social media or whatever when things got really crazy. Yeah. Right? yeah. So yeah. Uh, but it seems like that's calmed down a bit now. Uh, fingers crossed, I hope. Yeah, right. <laughs> but in general, everything again, I, I truly believe everything happens for us, not to us. That's right. And this is all an evolutionary process. Sometimes it's hard for people to fully wrap their minds around. But as we start to embrace the notion of a heart mm -hmm. mind, yeah. a heart brain consciousness. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll end with this. Leonardo da Vinci gives a, a kind of a recipe on life. And he says to achieve a complete mind, mm -hmm. right? To achieve a complete mind, mm -hmm. study the science of art. Mm -hmm study the art of science, mm. realize that everything is connected. Mm. And most people don't know him as a philosopher, yeah. but he was absolutely a philosopher. And I see it as another quote that I heard, which is when the heart thinks mm -hmm. and when the brain feels, mm -hmm. then the river of wisdom flows. Mm. Wow. And having a heart brain consciousness first requires transcending self hatred. It requires yeah. transcending beyond concepts of duality, that realizing that your love for the world and for yourself is more important than who's right or wrong. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Because we, we tend to put love for things only with those things that we think are right. Mm hmm. Yeah. When actually acceptance is all about accepting the world as it is. And as we accept it as it is, the more it will become, in my opinion, in our own perception, our own experience, what we hope to see, see the change. Right. We want to be in the world. Yeah. And I fundamentally believe that, that if we can get and grasp this concept of the heart brain, mm -hmm. then that is transcendence for humanity. Yeah. This experience here could be an experience full of disasters every day or miracles every day. Yeah. It's your choice. Yeah. It's up to us. I agree a, a thousand percent. Brain heart coherence is the key.